Hello and welcome everybody. Tonight I'll be talking to you about Project Monarch, which is a new approach to uh, studying wildlife movements that combines technology and community science. But before we get into the details of Project Monarch, I'm going to talk a little bit about a, a little monarch biology lesson. So uh, the monarch butterfly undergoes an annual migration cycle that spans multiple generations. It encompasses all of North America. It starts in the spring and summer in Mexico, and they migrate north and will expand throughout the entire continent, all the way up into southern Canada, as far north as the milkweed plant grows. And this is because monarchs and milkweed are connected. Female monarchs will only lay their eggs on milkweed plants, and caterpillars will only eat uh, the milkweed leaves. And so that limits their range as far north as they can go. Throughout the spring and summer months, uh, these monarchs will live, mate, die, and the cycle repeats. And they live as an adult about three to five weeks. You get about four generations through the spring and summer. However, in the fall, a change occurs when the uh, temperature begins to drop and the days get shorter. And the monarchs born at this time are different than their parents. These monarchs, after emerging from the chrysalis as an adult butterfly, instead of mating, they load up on nectar and build up fat reserves and they begin to fly south. And another big difference about these monarchs is that they will live many times longer than their, uh, the par their parents did or any previous generation. And it's up to eight to nine months. And they do this, they live this long because they make this incredible journey back to these overwintering sites. And so for most monarchs, that means the mountains in central Mexico, while some monarchs will travel to uh, the southern coast of California and the uh, southern tip of Florida. At these very specific overwintering sites, these monarchs gather in enormous numbers and an amazing density. It's truly a natural phenomenon. Um, as you can see some of the pictures here of how densely these monarchs uh, cover these trees. And what's really amazing is that these monarchs are able to get back to these very specific sites, the same grove of trees, despite the fact that it was their great, great grandparents that were last there. And so the mechanism for how they're able to navigate and get back to this spot is still not fully understood by science. Throughout the winter months, these monarchs will spend the time as in a hibernative state where they cluster together on these trees and uh, that helps protect them from the elements. When it begins to warm up in early spring, they'll come down from the trees, they'll wake up and they'll start to fly north uh, where they'll mate, seek out milkweed to lay their eggs and then die and the cycle repeats again through the next year. So what is Project Monarch? Project Monarch is a high-tech community science effort to track the movements of monarchs along this amazing migration. The high-tech aspect refers to the novel methods we are using to track monarchs. For decades, monarchs have been tracked using uh, tiny sticker tags that they put on the wings of the monarchs, and these require um, reciting by keen observers who then will report the ID written on the sticker tag and um, through this way, we've learned lots about monarchs. In fact, almost everything we know about monarch migration to this day was learned through programs like that. However, with Project Monarch, we're leveraging recent advances in technology, which have enabled the creation of incredibly small trackers that can go on a monarch. And we're really bringing monarch tracking into the 21st century. So the goals of Project Monarch are to track monarch movements in unprecedented details, specifically to allow scientists to better understand the timing, speed, and direction of monarch migration, and then look at the habitat usage along these migratory routes. Now, the greatest risk to uh, monarch populations today is habitat loss, uh, not just during their spring and summer months and the fall migration, but also at their overwintering sites. And so with this kind of data, you can allow conservationists to focus their habitat preservation and restoration efforts into the places where it's going to have the largest impacts um, for the benefit of the whole species. So through this project, we also help to raise awareness on monarch and pollinator conservation in general. And that really happens with the engagement through the community science aspect. The first half of the, uh, the high tech part of Project Monarch is the transmitter and or as we call them a tag and these radio transmitters they transmit a unique id about once per second in the case of this transmitter and when a receiver picks up this unique uh, id this transmission you know that animal is close by and even by using the signal strength of that transmission um, you can infer roughly how close the animal is and now as i said radio uh, tracking animals with radio transmitters is not new that's been happening for decades however what is new is the size of this transmitter Never before has a transmitter been made 
this small and small enough to be safely deployed on a butterfly without affecting its natural ability to fly. Now, the reason that we can get this transmitter so light is that we don't have a battery. It's solar powered. Usually the heaviest part of any wildlife tracking device is a battery. And these trackers are powered by a tiny solar panel, smaller than your fingernail, really, really tiny solar panel. And so even on sunny or moderately cloudy day, it provides the device enough power to function. A second innovative feature of these tracking devices is that they transmit at the same frequency as Bluetooth, which means they're detectable by anybody's smartphone. So traditionally in you know, radio uh, tracking of wildlife, the transmitters would transmit at a very specific fre frequency, which requires dedicated infrastructure that's maintained by scientists so they can detect these tags and then collect their data. However, with these tags, everybody has a receiver in their pocket. Now, to tap into this existing network of receivers that's already out in the world, we developed the Project Monarch app. And so this is a free to download app. Um, it's available on Android and iOS. And this app uses a smartphone's Bluetooth capabilities to listen for tags. And when it detects the transmission from one of these Monarch tags, it can take that unique ID it transmits and it can match it with the Monarch that it was deployed on. And so now we know where that Monarch was. So it'll take that detection, it'll source the time and location from the phone's GPS, combine all that data and upload it to the cloud. Now, we take all these detection records that have been uploaded to the cloud and we can use them to reconstruct the tracks of individual monarchs along their migratory routes. And so that's just providing an unprecedented level of detail um, that you know, it would take somebody to recite these sticker tags this many times, um, but now we can, you can do it with a phone. But the aspect that you have to get around here is you have to get people out there scanning, right? If no one's listening, then you know, does the tree fall in the woods? You know, does anyone hear it? Right? So we had to get people to use the app. So to do that, we made a game aspect to it. In the app, users uh, score points every time they detect a monarch and for the number of individual monarchs that they detect. And so you, you accumulate your points by finding your uh, monarchs and you'll climb this leaderboard. There's even leaderboards for both of that. And at our public tagging demos, people sit there and see who can get the most points. And trust me, it's pretty fun. Um, everybody enjoys it. And so now, Putting it all together, we have the transmitter and the app and the community science aspect. We have the potential to create the world's largest wildlife monitoring network, and then to utilize that network to help scientists and conservationists better understand at-risk species like the monarch. In 2023, we did a pilot study uh, of Project Monarch, and we launched that in Cape May Point, New Jersey. And the point of the pilot was really to demonstrate the the ability of the technology, see how it would work out in the field, and then assess the feasibility of scaling this project up to the level it would take to make a scientific impact. And so over the course of this uh, year, which uh, just the fall of that year, we deployed over 75 tags on Monarchs. We had over 3,000 people download and use the app, and they collectively uploaded over 250,000 detections. So it was an unbelievable success. If you had asked me before the season how many detections we were gonna upload, I, I don't think I would have said 20,000. Um, and we got 250,000. Here's a look at some of the data that we recorded that first year. So these are maps of Cape May Point. We deployed most of our tags in Cape May Point. And while this data is hyper-localized, and uh, that's just due to the size of the project last year, um, you really can see the level of detail that we're getting, which again is unprecedented. So on the right here, we have a heat map of where all the detections occurred in Cape May Point for the entire season. Um, so this is all monarchs, all season. And you can immediately see the hot spots, the spots that monarchs were liking to hang out, right? And so through this kind of analysis, you can look at the habitat use of these animals and understand where they're going. And then if you track that year over year and look for changes, you can look at the, uh, you can assess the effectiveness and really quantify the effectiveness of habitat restoration efforts. Now on the right, you see a track from an individual monarch. This particular monarch uh, was named Xerxes. We name all the monarchs. Uh, so this one was named Xerxes, and it spent 12 days in Cape May Point. And it flew throughout the town, um, and we tracked it throughout the town over that 12 days before it continued on its migration south. And so never before has an individual monarch been tracked th to these many locations over that length of time. It's an unprecedented level of detail. And so what I really wanna to highlight too about all this data is this was collected by members of the community. This wasn't 
scientists setting up dedicated infrastructure and maintaining it. This was members of the public going out and participating in the project, engaging with the project. Again, all that data was hyper-localized. It was Cape May Point, right? But I think we proved that you know, we can get the level of detail we need and that it works and we can scale it. So this year, we're launching the Project Monarch Collaboration. And in the Project Monarch Collaboration, we have partners all across North America, and we hope to deploy hundreds of tags. All these partners will be holding their own tagging demos like we did last year. They will be deploying tags on Monarchs. They will be educating people in their community and teaching them how to use the app so they go out and scan and look for Monarchs and upload detections as well. So with this, we will be expanding the geographic scale and sheer number of tag deployments and hopefully the geographic scale and number of Monarch detections that we get uh, uploaded to our server. And so again, the success of this project really lies in the number of people we can get involved. The, the power is in how many people in the community we can get out using the app and then how many tags we can get out. And the data generated from this project will allow scientists to study Monarch migration at a level of detail that has never before been possible. And ultimately, this information will be used to help protect this iconic species and ensure that their unique migration continues for future generations. And I want to leave you with this idea. Project Monarch is at its heart about monarch conservation. But there's no reason to stop at monarchs. In fact, this same approach could be used to study any number of at-risk species. So what we're really doing here is we're laying out a model for how you can use the most recent advances in technology and tap into the power of community science and then reimagine the way we monitor wildlife and use that tool uh, to benefit science and conservation alike. And thank you.